Hello, hello! My name is Callista and welcome back to Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. In the last episode, we got our explanation. It was weird. Kyo, he's got some type of DID situation. He believes that his altar is his deceased sister and he's in love with her and he's actually a serial killer. Things got weird. Things got really weird in the last episode. Either way, we're due an execution. Looks like you're already prepared. Now then, let's get started. It's punishment time! It's the moment you've all been waiting for! Punishment time! Huh? Punishment time? Sister... My beloved sister, at long last, I'll finally get to see you again. That's right. Yes, from now on, no one will try to stop us. We can be together without having to hide our love from others. But what? Wait, I can't accept this. Therefore. Like I said, there is no such thing as a death that can be accepted. From an anthropological point of view. Why do you think so many different cultures have funeral rites? Why do you think rumors of ways to resurrect the dead never cease? Yes. The living must find a reason, however forced, to accept death when it happens. How you come to terms with death also determines how you live, yes. What was that? What? I... That was the answer I reached. How about you? How will you live a life that faces death? Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. I've prepared a special punishment for the ultimate anthropologist, Karakio Shinguji. I shall observe. I will watch over you all as a ghost. As your friend, I will watch over you. I don't want you watching me, dickhead. I don't want you watching me. No, thank you. You you can go fuck your ghost sister. I don't I don't want you watching me. That's right. It won't just be me and Korokio. All those who died will be watching. <laughs> I'll be watching to see how you face the death of your friends. Humanity is beautiful. I will be watching forever and ever. It's punishment time! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Karakio has been found guilty. Time for the punishment.
Oh my god! Oh! Oh! I... T I have thought that first screen, my, my initial thought was, of course his death involves bondage! He is the ultimate gimp! God damn it! But, oh my god! Monodum committed suicide! I... Literally the last thing I ever expected! I was convinced he was gonna kill off Monotaro! I was convinced of that! Oh my god! And then the- Oh, the thing where he's like, Ah, oh, my sister! And his sister's just like, Bitch, have some salt! Oh! Oh, I guess. I- I'm not gonna lie, my first thought is that like, I- He said his sister was sick and in hospital. I'm like, I'm wondering if their relationship was as consensual as he made it out to seem. If she's like, yeah, no, bitch! I don't want to spend my afterlife with you. Bye. But I'm like, you tell me he didn't take advantage of his terminally ill sister. That I'm, I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about that. Either way, Monokuma gets to spend his days with a hot ghost. That's that's nice. I oh I oh didn't expect that. Didn't expect that. Also, there was a um. The scene where he was going into the uh, into the pot, that was very reminiscent of um, one of the shots from Celeste's execution. Where she's looking up as the fire is burning her and she's, you know, enjoying it because she's getting this beautiful death. She's having this stunning death and she's crying tears of joy. Like, very reminiscent of that. I, I like that. I, I like that callback. What? about that i told you ignore him the whole resurrection ritual is obviously a lie he's just trying to shake us mentally to get us to panic what's the point i'm assuming you'll think another murder will happen if you do that right <laughs> boo -hoo -hoo. who can say hmm. what a waste if none of you were going to use it, you should have let me have it. Then I could have resurrected one of my dead siblings. Um... Which one? Eh? Well, I, I don't know. They were all pretty terrible, actually. Hmm. Wait, did one of us die? I could 
could have sworn it's been just the two of us this whole time! Oh, yeah! It's too bad you missed your chance to raise the dead! That's what you get for doubting me! <laughs> too bad! So long, farewell! Uh, um... Even now, he still talks about raising the dead. Always messing around. Man, this is stupid. What people believe in is up to them, but... Living people shouldn't have to suffer because of the dead. Of course! The living are more precious than the dead, no matter what. <sighs> I'm not... I'm not even keeping up the pretense of... To, I just... I can't with him. I can't. He uses every moment to have this I am the hero bit. And I'm, j I'm just... I'm... No. Just no. That's not something a coward like you should say. <laughs> Shut up. Leave me alone. So when you want to be left alone, people should do as you ask. But when other people ask you to leave them alone, no, no, no. You can stomp all over their boundaries. Hmm. Mm, Kaito. But... But there's one thing this case taught me. I thought there was a god watching over us, but... <laughs> there isn't after all. Not in this academy. Mm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, that's why we have to work together, right? Face it together. Our ultimate talents are the best weapons we have. Go to do his best. Then, gone to do his best to keep everyone safe. Gone to want to protect everyone. Um, but your talent is entomology. That might come in handy. You don't know. Maybe the next motive is gigantic bugs are let into the school. We'll need someone to save us and Gonta is that man. Don't you doubt him, Samugi. I don't want Shuichi to use his ultimate talent anymore. I'm getting sick of class trials. You're right. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, your talent as an assassin is way more trouble. When are you going to use that, huh? Hmm. Okay. I'll work hard until everyone trusts my ultimate talent. Mm -hmm. I'll accept that. That's right. It may not be possible now, but I'll put in the effort so everyone can trust me. I... I won't run away anymore. I want to survive and escape this place with everyone. Maki. <laughs> I see! I wonder how long that'll last. What if your true calling as a killer shows? Huh. Don't underestimate her. Maki rolls one of my sidekicks. Got a minute? I fucking hate him. I don't remember being your sidekick. Also, didn't I tell you to stop calling me Maki Roll? Oh. Oh, you guys are so close now. This must be the powerful bond of friendship. Or Stockholm Syndrome, one of the two. Preferred it to happen sooner, especially not after losing seven people. <sighs> You're right! Only nine people left now. <laughs> well, what do you know? The dumbass can do basic math! Fuck you, Mew! Fuck you, do not! Do not go after my boy! That's right, seven pieces of shit have been flushed away and only nine remain! Actually... By that calculation, doesn't that make you one of the pieces? But... Just nine of us? Well, you know... Humans are like weeds, too numerous to count. Seven of us dead doesn't mean much in the end. That's totally what the Heartless Robot is thinking, right? Right? How rude! No, I am not thinking that. Your blatant robophobia is simply inexcusable. But you know, 
But hey, none of us gave up, right? I know we're all gonna escape. I'm not gonna rely on a god, spirits, or the dead. I believe in you. Just you guys. I believe in all of you. Okay. Kaito. Well, of course. You're right. Those of us who remain can start over. Hey, hey. Hold up. Keyboy needs to apologize to everyone for the whole student council thing. Hmm. And there's only one kind of apology that I'm willing to accept. How exciting. Yank your head off and smash it onto the ground with all your strength. Got that? No way. I have never heard of such an intense form of apology. It seems like everything is settled for now. Even though we're missing her. Yeah. You alright? Himiko, you okay? Anything Gonta can do to help, you can tell Gonta. Hey. I think we should let her have some space for now. That might be best for her. Okay. I remember how I felt. Oh. Oh, gone to understand. Yeah. You're so dumb. God, Himiko is such a liar. Coming from you, you bitch. Huh? Because I'm a liar. Personally, I don't think lies are exactly a bad thing. Let's face it, you wouldn't have any free will if the world was comprised with just the truth. But... But even then, I don't think it's good to lie to yourself, you know. Yeah. Right? What are you saying? Think about Timiko's feelings a little bit. Nuh-uh. I only said this because I thought about it. Because? Himiko has been lying to herself about her own feelings, so she's been holding back. Hey! Hey, what are you repressing? Why are you trying so hard to hold back? What? Hold back? Yeah. Expressing your feelings is perfectly natural. You shouldn't feel ashamed at all. So, if you feel like crying while you're talking to Angie, go ahead and cry your eyes out. You'll feel better when you do. Well, I mean, laughing makes you feel better too. And venting your anger onto something can really cheer you up. Train your heart by crying, laughing, and venting your anger, Himiko. Yeah. That's it, darling. That's it. Let it out. T Tenko! Angie! I'm so lonely! I'm so lonely without you two! But I gotta survive! I, I still can't go to where you are! But I'm lonely! I'm so lonely without the both of you! <laughs> Himiko. Damn it. <sighs> Himiko cried for a long time. She cried as if she was releasing all the emotions she had bottled up inside. Before we knew it, as if allured by her doing so, we began crying. The tears we shed, I can't even describe it. We were crying about what we had been through and what was to come. Sadness, hatred, frustration, discord, anger, love, tears filled with emotion. But at the very least, they weren't tears of submission. They were tears to push us forward.
After a while, Himiko finally calmed down. However... Oh. Is she hard to carry, Gonta? No, she fine. That's adorable! She's sleeping very peacefully. She's all tuckered out after crying. Robots sleep well after leaking their oils too, right? I have told you many times that I do not use oil as my fuel source. But wow, that really surprised me. She passed out as soon as she stopped crying. Yeah, but she looks so peaceful sleeping like that. She probably felt better after letting it all out, don't you think? Yeah, I hope so. Then go to carry Himiko to her room. Make sure you focus real good on your back, you hear me? She's unconscious. She's unconscious, Mew, you fuckwit. You'll need that focus if you want to feel her little mosquito bites poking ya. You fuckwit, Mew. There's no way he'd do such a thing. Gota is a gentleman after all. While we were heading back to the dorms, I suddenly noticed Kaito had stopped in his tracks. Don't go back to him. Don't do it. Just let me end this chapter in peace. Fuck's sake. Hmm. Hmm. Kaito, what's wrong? Hmm. hmm. Oh, nothing. Good, let's go. I just wanted to get some night air. Don't worry about me. Go on ahead. Huh? Are uh, you sure? Shuichi, take the hint. Take the hint. Just go. Well... Anyway, don't do something like this again, okay? If you dislike scary things, then you should have said so earlier. I thought you were sick. Huh. You worried about me? Yeah, worried about your stupidity. Ha <laughs> Huh, still haven't warmed up to me, huh? Maybe it's because you physically assaulted her four times and haven't apologized for any of it. But... Maybe not, but I feel like the walls we had up are coming down a little, you know? Perhaps those walls were her enemies. It seems like she doesn't want to wait anymore. Got it. Yeah, because of me, you bitch. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe, but you sound like you're bragging, Kaito. Huh. Huh, but like I said, I'm gonna get some air before I go back. You can go on ahead. Okay. Sure, got it. See you tomorrow, unfortunately. Got it. Yeah, see you tomorrow. After our goodbyes, I return to my dorm room. I didn't notice what was going on with Kaito. Hmm. Hmm. Is this a cough like you're trying to get someone's attention? Or is this an actual cough? Tell me he's sick and dying. Tell me he's sick. Just like that. I was feeling so low. And just like that, my spirits have surged. Please let him be sick and dying. <clears throat> Fuck yes! Fuck yes! Fuck you, Kaito! <laughs> oh yes! Damn it! Get in there! I don't have time to be dying. I still haven't gone into space yet. Fuck you! Damn it. No way am I gonna die here. Yes you are, bitch! Yes you are! Die! Die for me! No way. I don't think I've been this happy in a while. <laughs> I am so happy at that. Oh my god! This is the best news ever! This is the best news! He might actually be dying! <gasps> Oh my god! I'm, I'm overjoyed! I'm okay, we got a mask, I don't give a shit, Kaito's dying! Kaito's dying and it's everything I hoped for! Oh my days! Oh, remember to breathe, Callista! Remember to breathe, you can't be so- A few days ago, hello! Hey there. Guess I don't have to introduce myself, huh? 
I think that's Rentaro. I think that's Rentaro. However, however, I want to, I want to talk about, um, that chapter. I was also asked, um, what my thoughts are on the remaining characters. So, you know, I'll, I'll go over that. Um, very, very quickly, my thoughts on the characters. I don't particularly like Shuichi. I think he's remarkably spineless. Um, he has taken more of a role in this than, um, Makoto certainly ever did. And I think he might have taken charge more so than Hajime, but still, compared to Kaede, Kaede had so much personality, and Shuichi's just kind of like, I do whatever Kaito tells me. Occasionally I have a spine, but nine times out of ten, no, I'm just willing to follow Kaito's instructions. Yeah, I, I'm not particularly fond of Shuichi. Um, he's dying, yes! I love Gonta. I love Gonta with all of my heart and soul. He is my best boy. I love him. And if anyone hurts him, I will kill them. I hate this little shit. He's such a little shit. And I, I am frustrated with how often we say very similar things. It concerns me. But on the whole, I don't like him unless he's slagging off Kaito. In which case, big thumbs up there. Um, Kibo, I feel so bad for Kibo. I feel astoundingly bad for him. At the beginning of this, I thought that Kibo was rather bland. He was like, he, he was like C tier for me. You know, nothing special, but also not particularly hateable. But seeing everyone shit on him for like no reason, I, I feel so badly for Kibo. I, I really like Kimiko. She's, she's also one of my favorites. I like Maki. Samugi makes me suspicious. I, I don't know what to make of Samugi. I don't know what to make of her. I've been paying attention to what she's been saying. I don't like the fact that she's been, you know, the fact that Gonta has been saying, oh, I thought I saw something and it was really small. So I thought it was a bug, but like that, there aren't any bugs on the island. So I'm not sure what it was. And Samugi's response, on multiple occasions now, she's been like, oh yes, there are no bugs on the island, absolutely not. And I'm like, how do you know that? How, how do you know that there are no bugs here? How do you know for definite that there are no bugs in the vicinity, in the cage? How do you know that? And the fact that she's going like, oh, well, there are no bugs, so therefore you didn't see anything. There was absolutely nothing that you saw. I'm like, that's suspicious. Rather than like, oh, well, we've come to the conclusion that there are no bugs, so what the fuck did you see? She's saying, oh, no, no, your vision must be wrong. You didn't see anything. That I find sus. And during the trial, actually, when Monokuma was like, oh, yeah, no, the, the Necronomicon actually totally would have worked. Samugi kept backing him up. Don't think I didn't notice that. Every time there was talk about the Necronomicon, Samugi was always the one being like, oh, so, do, so it could actually have worked. Oh my God, isn't this mysterious? Ooh, like she kept doing that. Everyone else is being like, oh, I don't know what would have happened. Or, you know, saying, oh no, that's dumb. Like that's impossible. But there's Samugi backing up Monokuma consistently she kept being like oh it would have worked Ooh. i just sus very sus and then finally you i i don't like new i i don't like her i think she's supposed to be funny but she isn't she isn't funny in the slightest in my opinion she's just crass and cruel really not fond of her ah oh, kaede i miss you kaede <laughs> I didn't like the things that you did, but I appreciated the fact that she had a personality. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would much rather play someone that I didn't like, but had a personality compared to Shuichi. Um, I really fucking hate Kaito. I hope he is dying. I sincerely hope he is dying. Like, I, I don't want him to live. I don't want him to live. He is... I was recently rereading The Mirror Cracked from Side to Side by Agatha Christie. It is a fantastic book. And there is a character called Heather Badcock. And she really reminds me of Kaito. And every description of Heather, it's the same thing. She is so kind. 
She is the kindest woman out there. If you are in a, you, if you are in need, then she will help you out. No questions asked. She never asks for like, oh, I'll help you out, but only if you help me later. She is genuinely kind and she is helpful. She desperately wants to help other people whenever there is someone in need, where, whenever there is a cause that needs to be addressed, Heather is at the forefront of it. And she is so fucking inconsiderate. She, she never considers anyone's opinions other than her own. She never considers how other people feel. It is all about her own feelings. She, that, that description, I'm like, that's Kaito. That is Kaito to a T. He is kind. He is helpful. He is completely inconsiderate. And I wish, I wish, because there are some people out there who I, I think, you know, if you say kind, oh, what, what what is a kind person? What are personality traits of a kind person? Well, obviously they're kind and they're helpful. No, they're kind. That is the only personality trait of a kind person. The only personality trait of a helpful person is that they are helpful. I think people ascribe other personality traits to a specific trait. If you're kind, then you must automatically be considerate. Not at all. You can be incredibly kind and incredibly inconsiderate. I think a really good example is um in the first game, Byakuya, when he told to when he told Toko to take a bath, he was being helpful. He was also being cruel, callous, a right asshole. He did not give a single solitary shit about Toko. He was so fucking rude to her, but her not taking a bath, it was bad for her health. It wasn't healthy for the people around her. She needed to take a bath. Telling her, you need to take a bath, was helpful and cruel and callous. Just because someone is helpful doesn't mean a whole host of other positive personality traits. And I I wish they, um, they made a, a film, there are a few film versions of the mirror cracked from side to side. However, in my opinion, the best one is the one they made for the Marple TV series on ITV, I think it is. It's got um, Julia McKenzie playing Miss Marple. And there is a scene that perfectly illustrates how someone can be kind and helpful whilst also being completely inconsiderate. There is this scene and I wish I could play it. I wish I could play it right now to show you what that looks like. But um, just as a quick recap, Miss Marple, she's walking along the street and this car comes whizzing down and they start honking their horn at her and yoo-hoo, cooey, they, they startle her. They startle her and she like, oh, and she falls over. And Heather Badcock is walking along the other side of the road and she, you know, rushes over to her like, oh my God, oh my God, what what an idiot. Like, how, how could he do that? Oh my God, let me, let me help you home. And so she takes Miss Marple home and she makes her a, um, a sugary cup of tea for the shock. And she gets a footstool and she elevates Miss Marple's foot, you know, to, to keep it, you know, a, a nice angle. And you might be thinking, well, what's inconsiderate about that? That sounds perfectly, that sounds perfectly considerate. What do you mean? She's being inconsiderate. All throughout this scene, Miss Marple is saying, please stop. I don't want you here. Please, this is not helpful to me. You are hurting me. Please stop. And she is ignoring her. When she falls and Miss Badcock comes over and helps her up, Miss Marple, where she falls, it's literally right outside her house. She is about 10 steps away from her front door. And so Miss Badcock says like, oh, you live here. You know, you live right here, don't you, Miss Marple? Let me help you inside. And Miss Marple is saying, really, it's not necessary. And Heather grabs Miss Marple's arms and begins and begins frog marching her to her front door. And all the while, Miss Marple is saying like, thank you, this is very kind, but like, it's not necessary, please stop. She's making her the drink. You know, she puts one cube, two cube, three, four, five, six, seven cubes of sugar in this cup of tea. And Miss Marple is saying, I can't have a lot of sugar. Like, please, I, I can't drink this. And all the while, Miss, Miss Badcock is saying, oh no, I know exactly what you need. I was with St. John's Ambulance during the war. You need sugar for the shock. And Miss Marple, she, again, she's saying, I can't drink this. I can't drink this. I can't drink that much sugar. And then when she gets the footstool, she grabs Miss Marple's foot and sharply lifts it up. And Miss Marple, <gasps> she gasps in pain because Heather has just hurt her. 
because she's so desperate to help her. She was so desperate to help her that she ignored the fact that she was intruding in Miss Marple's home. She was so desperate to help her that she ignored the fact that she had made Miss Marple a drink that she couldn't actually consume. And she was so desperate to help that she ignored the fact that she had physically hurt this woman. That is how you can be kind and helpful and inconsiderate. Kaito might have the best motivations in the world. I still think that part of his motivation is that he wants to be viewed as a leader. He wants to be viewed as a leader. He wants everyone to think well of him. It's why he doesn't like people calling him stupid or a coward. He wants to be the big brave leader here. But to be fair, he might also genuinely want to help. He might also genuinely want to help, but he is being inconsiderate in how he is going about it. And if you're the type of person who's like, you know what, the ends justify the means. If you're that type of person, then fair. Me, personally, not so much. I am very much like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this. You've robbed Marky of the chance to learn. You know, figuring that out, figuring out for herself, you know, I need help and I'm going to ask for it, that is a vital skill. And for all we know, Marky might have said, yeah, no, I don't want to do your training, left, and then thought about it on her own and thought, you know what, actually, I do need help. I do need help. And I'm going to approach them and I'm going to ask to join. She could have had this remarkable opportunity to grow and we'll never know if Marky would have done that because Kaito robbed her of that opportunity to grow. Kaito forced his help on her. And in my opinion, that's one of the worst things you can do to a person. Forcing help on someone is an awful thing, in my opinion. Again, you might disagree. You might think, well, if someone needs help and they're not asking for it, then you should force it on them. Otherwise, they might sink. In my opinion, you should let them sink. Let them sink or let them realize, you know what, I can swim. I can swim. I can do this on my own. I can have this opportunity to grow and learn. I can ask for that help. But no, Kaito, oh, I have to give you help. I have to give you help. I just, I can't. I can't with him. Um, as for the chapter, this is, oh, I, I don't know how to word this. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I thought about this chapter because I I can't say whether or not I enjoyed this because I spent all of it concerned that I was going to have to narrate a rape scene. That's effectively what it comes down to. I spent the entire chapter being like, when's the rape? When's the rape? When's the sexual assault? When's that coming? And I... I, I, that makes me sound very ungrateful. I always appreciate a trigger warning. I, I will look up, when I'm going to play a game, I look up trigger warnings because there are certain things that I can't handle. There are certain things I don't want to narrate if it's a visual novel. If it's a visual novel that I, I was recommended to play one and I, I looked it up and literally it was like, this contains heavy themes of rape and pedophilia. And I was like, I'm not narrating that. I'm, no, thank you. No, thank you. I have no interest in narrating that. And I, I will look up trigger warnings for games. However, there are some games, the trigger warnings are so intrinsically tied with major spoilers that I can't really easily access them. So I will always appreciate someone reaching out and going, Callista, just so you are aware, there are trigger warnings of rape, sexual assault, you know, stuff like that. I will always appreciate someone reaching out and giving me a, a trigger warning. However... In this case, personally, I'm not triggered by negative portrayals of mental health. I'm not triggered by that at all. If you were triggered by that, then yeah, absolutely, you would 100% need a trigger warning for this chapter. But me personally, I, I would say that a trigger warning was unnecessary for me. And because I got just a generic trigger warning, like I said, I thought, oh shit, there's going to be a rape. There's going to be a rape or a sexual assault. So for all of this chapter... I was just there being like, when's this, when's the assault going to happen? When's it going to happen? Okay, it's not happened during daily life. Okay, we're, we're getting into the investigation. It's still not come up. Oh, shit, we've reached the trial. We've reached the trial. This is going to be the motive. God damn. And it, it really 
affected how I viewed this because like I said, I, I spent most of this chapter really concerned. And then funnily enough, in a way, once the reveal did happen, that it was the, the writers being shit at writing mental health topics, in a way, it made that so much better. In a way, I liked that twist so much more because I thought it was going to turn out like, yes, I raped Angie. If it's, it's just like, oh no, it's just, it's just the writers being shit with mental health. Like, that's not so bad. That's not so bad, comparatively speaking. You know, I'll take it. So in, in a weird way, I really liked the twist because it wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. I... At the same time, like I said, I can't say whether I enjoyed this chapter or not. I can't say whether or not I enjoyed the investigation because to be honest, that trigger warning, that completely, it, it wholeheartedly influenced the the deductions I made. It completely influenced me. I, If I hadn't received that trigger warning, to be honest, I don't know if I would have guessed that Kia was responsible for both deaths. I think, I think I would have gotten that Kia was responsible for Angie's murder because there was just so much set up. There was, there was so much set up that relied on someone knowing about the seance. And Kia was the only one who knew about the seance. But at the same time, I, I said this during the trial, I think. It, it's like with Himiko, where I was like, Himiko's not going to have done it because who's going to, who's going to implicate themselves? That's dumb. And I don't view Kia as dumb, but there was so much evidence. I don't, I don't know whether I would have gotten that. I, I think I would have guessed that Kia was responsible for Angie, but I don't, not Angie, excuse me, Tenko. I think I would have guessed that Kia was responsible for Tenko's death, but I think I would have kept up with my original theory, which was that he stumbled upon Angie's body and was like, I can use this. For my own murder, mwahaha. I think I would have gone with that. I don't think I would have gotten that Kia was responsible for both. That was, I, I think this has been the trickiest case. This has absolutely been the case where I was, I was struggling. I was struggling. I, but, but for that trigger warning, I don't think I would have guessed that Kia did both. Like I said, it was because I was like, who's, who's the most rapey? Who's the most rapey person here? It's the gimp. I, I, I don't know what to make of that. I, I have very, like I said, I, I guess I just feel very conflicted about that whole chapter. I don't know what to make of it. It's, I, I, I can't say, I can't say I really enjoyed it because again, I was nervous throughout all of it. But at the same time, I, I did really enjoy the challenge that that murder gave me. That, that is definitely, out of all of the games, out of all of the games, that one is the one that gave me the most bother. That is the one where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know, I don't know if my theory is right. I have, I'm going off a trigger warning I got. I'm not 100% sure. I, I did like the crime. I'm not so sure about the chapter as a whole, but I really enjoyed the crime and the level of challenge it posed. That was, that was enjoyable. That aspect of it was really enjoyable. Now then, now then, now then. I just want to spend the last few minutes of this episode talking about theories. By this point, we are halfway through the game, which this game has gone by so fast. I swear down I started it last week. I swear down. It, I, I should not be halfway finished with this. But by this stage, I'm like, okay, we should see some clues that point to the larger mystery as a whole. Why are they here? What is going on? There should have been clue drops by now. And there have been two lines, two lines that have repeatedly come up. And in, a, in cases like this, you need to look for that repetition. You need to look for that repetition because that, it, it clues you in. The first line I want to go over. There have been 
repeated mentions of what if all of this was just for show? What if there was someone out there watching this? What if this was all one big performance? We've had that mentioned, I think, in every single chapter. In the first chapter, in the, um, in Kaede's, uh, death, we even had the, um, the light. The, the light that comes on when you're, um, you know, in, like, TV studios, radio studios, we had that. And all of these characters, their personalities, their backgrounds are so fucking weird. They are so out there. They're all like characters in films, in those shitty B movies like The Room, Sharknado, etc., etc. They all have these really wacky backstories. And again, that repetition of, oh, what if this was for show? What if someone out there was watching this? They'd get a real kick out of this. And there is one clue that I haven't mentioned before. I don't think I've even had it in an episode. When you first load up the game, there are three screens. Two of them are messages. One of them is like, a, you know, Oi, if you pirate this, we'll fucking have you. Um, the next is, oh, you know, any any resemblances to persons living or dead is completely coincidental. Please don't sue us. And then the third one, it's the um, the Spike Chunsoft logo. And it shows Monokuma sat on his little chair in the trial grounds, except it's not a trial grounds. It's a stage. And there are countless other Monokumas watching. I will have it on screen if I remember. That pops up every single time I open the game and I have dismissed it wholeheartedly. However... We have had one too many drops of what if this was all just a show? What if this was just for the entertainment of some random person out there? I have two theories. Either this is either this is going really meta. I think I've said this theory before. Either this is really meta, and they this is like, oh, this we realize this is a video game. We realize this is a video game, or this is a TV show. It's got to be one of the two. They have made far too many references to, oh, what if this was a show? What if someone was watching this? It's one of the two. It's either a video game, they realize they're in a video game, or this is a TV show, a movie, a play, I don't know. But this, I think this is all one big performance. I think this is all one big performance piece. The second line that has been repeated... I've not been to space yet. I can't die here. I've not been to space. Oh, this can't happen. I've not been to space. That line has been repeated over and over and over and over again. And whilst I thoroughly despise Kaito, I do pay attention to the things he says. There wouldn't be insects in space. I've been operating under the assumption that this is an undersea base. I just thought that'd be cool. However... However, if this were an environment in space, there wouldn't be insects there either. I just, again, I pay attention to those repeated lines. I pay a lot of attention to those repeated lines. And we should have had some clues as to what is going on here and where this place is. We should have had clue drops and we have had those lines being repeated a lot. I find it suspicious. I find it very, very suspicious. However, however, with that, I think I'm going to bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, I think we have, uh, I think we have Rantaro making a reappearance. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.